All right, so so far in the show, we've addressed many things. Um, how you can get a quick workout within uh, a 20 minute time span, different ways that you can have creative cooking sessions with your whole family. And now we're going to dive a little deeper into our original topic, which was cold weather running. I want to emphasize the point that these exercises can be used uh, by anyone, but before we get talking about them, I want to talk a little bit about what you should wear. I see a lot of things when I'm out and about uh, on the running trails, whether it be uh, on the actual trails themselves, in parks, recreation areas, or right on the, right on the main streets of town. And uh, I, I see a lot of unfortunate things. People working too hard. And what I say when I say people working too hard, they're wearing big bulky sweatshirts, um, they're wearing big bulky sweatpants. Um, let, let the viewer know, do not wear anything like this when it's 20 degrees out. I'm not advocating that at all. But uh, there are certain things that you can certainly uh, afford, nice, good valued items that you can get at any of the, uh, any of the local sporting goods stores. So I have a rule, um, a, a rule, anything that's under 30 degrees, I, I go three layers. Um, I, I like a good tight fitting um, base layer. Uh, something that uh, is just going to really, really kind of uh, keep the core temperature regulated. And my warmth that I'm going to get is from the secondary layer. Uh, the secondary layer for me usually is a fleece, uh, a nice running fleece. Uh, North Face makes good ones as well as the Brooks uh, Running Company. They also make good, good fleeces. And then on top, what really ties the whole thing together is an absolute windproof jacket. Make sure that whoever you get your jacket from, it's windproof, not just wind resistant. Because if you can keep the wind out of your fleece, uh, then you're going to be able to maintain a really nice level body temperature and really be able to run longer and longer and longer. <clears throat> so, uh, just want to squash something real quick. There is a difference between three layers and a windproof jacket with an inner layer. Um, the the three layer system, I, in my experience, is really a great way to maintain warmth. So uh, make sure that you uh, get a nice secondary layer uh, underneath your windproof jacket, and again a nice tight form fitting um, base layer. So let's talk a little bit about headgear. Headgear is important. Um, I, I am a, a big fan of of running skull caps, uh, and the difference between say like a a running winter skull cap and and just a, a regular one is most of the time the, the runner ones have some sort of fleece and or uh, material so that you don't get all itchy once you start getting the, the, a little hotter and work the sweat up and they usually are a little, uh, little lighter on top of the head to uh, let some of that air uh, steam out. Of course many of you might be thinking to put some, uh, some ear warmers, wrap that around your head, that's a fantastic idea as well. That's sort of your preference but I often find that as long as my ears are warm the rest of my body stays warm as well. Speaking of that, let's talk a little bit about gloves. Um, your hands being extremities of the body uh, certainly tend to regulate a little bit more as well as your feet. We'll get to the feet in just a minute. I'm a huge supporter of mittens. Don't waste your time with gloves. Uh, gloves, you, they, they will only take you so far. So if you're looking to run you know, any longer than four miles, I recommend mittens. Um, they tend just to keep your hands really nice. Make sure that you get the ones that you can actually take off and even expose your fingers because when I say that they actually work better, they, your hands will run very hot. Um, and like I said, back down to the feet, the only thing I really recommend here is instead of wearing your usual uh, you know, uh, running socks, wear wool socks. Uh, you can get them at any cycling shop. A lot of cyclists uh, wear them as well uh, when the weather is a little cooler. A nice pair of wool socks will go a long way in the inclement weather. And the last part is the lower, lower body. Um, I'm a big fan of winter tights, so you just throw on a pair of winter tights and a pair of running shorts on top of there. They're usually pretty good if you feel the need to throw on um, a pair of, of Streamline like Asics or Brooks uh, running sweatpants. They are tight fitting sweatpants, not, not, the, not the baggy thick ones that, that you're probably more apt to see, um, but the, the nice form fitting sweatpants and you will be happy and, on, and warm on your run. Uh, so let's get to these exercises. So the exercises that we're going to be talking about um, again, it, it is for runners and it is for outdoor activity, but uh, it's not just for runners. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preface this whole thing by saying, you know, if you really want to burn calories in a short amount of time, it's crucial that you work your leg muscles. Your leg muscles are the largest, um, most powerful, lazy muscles in the body. 
They don't like to do a whole lot of work because they are so big and so powerful. But just like anything that, that is big, there is great responsibility, big responsibility. A lot of power comes from these, from, from these leg movements. And uh, if you successfully do this uh, whenever you have a spare moment throughout your day, then you will, uh, you will in fact burn more calories than if you do a lot of upper body strength. So it's not just for running. Um, <clears throat> these are exercises that really anybody can do.